You're listening to The Monica Cade Show, an interview podcast series on life. We interview and capture conversations with creative minds, thought leaders, disruptors, and the people that are doing what they love while challenging the status quo. You can find the show notes on my website, monicacade.com, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook, at Monica Cade. But for now, let's dive into the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Monica Cade podcast. Today, my guest is Pete Evans, who is an internationally renowned household chef, restaurateur, author, and television presenter. His passion for food and a healthy lifestyle inspires individuals and families all around the world. He's produced a documentary, The Magic Pill, and he's also authored 20 books. He's a pretty interesting guy, keen surfer, a dad, and I'm really excited to share this conversation with you. So let's welcome him now. Good morning, Pete. Thanks so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, I know a lot of our listeners, they probably know who you are and some of them would have followed your journey, but I'd like to jump back to the beginning of your story. And I wanted to know when you knew you wanted to do cooking, health and nutrition. Uh, it's been an accumulation of all my life experiences that has led me to this place in time. Uh, my, my introduction to cooking was uh, at a very young age from my mother, of course, with the food that she served myself and my family and, and herself. And from that uh, sprung up, I guess, a- an awareness. Uh, I was always fascinated, even from a, from a young teen, how my friends would eat and drink. I'd be like, oh. They'd be drinking two litres of Coke or they'd have these big things of Coke in their fridge. It's not strange to see that. I thought, wow. And I wouldn't say we were super healthy eaters ourselves. You know, we, we uh, my mum and I are eating pretty much a standard Australian diet at that, that time. But, but I could see how at that time I was just aware about it, but I didn't really know too much about healthy nutrition. Mm-hmm. And then I got my first job. I got my first job as, as a 13-year-old working in a bakery making pies, and then at 14, I worked in McDonald's, and 15, 16, I worked in Sizzler, and then 17, I started an apprenticeship, and uh, a cooking apprenticeship. And it was never really a, 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 a pattern at that particular point in time. It was really just to get a job, and uh, I, I made a choice, and I wanted to live out of home, and the way to do that was to step into the real world, so, so to speak, or the matrix, and, and get a job so uh, I could be independent and, and live on my own and make my own decisions and really uh, see what life has to offer and what I have to offer myself in this life. So that was the journey into cooking. At the same time, around the age of 19, I, I discovered a book called Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins, which really sparked my curiosity is how does how do thoughts form, how do our belief systems uh, dictate the choices that we make, and uh, and there was this, uh, chapter or two on nutrition, which piqued my interest and uh, put me down a, a rabbit hole that I've been uh, <laughs> happily bouncing along ever since. Uh, it's interesting that you touch on that because I know even for myself and my own journey, I've noticed how much food does play a big part in how we function in day-to-day life. And so obviously you've harnessed the power of this throughout your time. Uh, prior to that, do you feel, prior to picking out Anthony's book, do you feel that you were able to recognize how you were feeling when you were eating certain foods or was it more just once in reading that that's when your awareness around that developed? Uh, it's interesting because I was quite a sickly child. I was pretty uh, underweight and constantly getting tonsillitis and block nose and you name it, the, the, the typical symptoms that kids get that we think is normal and now we realise that actually that is not normal. Normal is to be in a constant state of health and we shift our perceptions on what true health means and real health means, especially myself, fuck, I was so sick. You know, I was so inflamed and my body was just reacting in the only way that it knew how was to uh, force rest and relaxation and, and force uh, certain stuff out of the system. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's amazing now because I'm a lot older and a lot of people think that you actually go downhill when you start to get older. I'm younger. I'm young. I'm 45, but I don't get sick anymore. I never have to go to the doctor. I have a really simple approach to life. And it's, um, yeah, I, I wish I knew now. Wish I, I wish I knew then what I know now. But again, grateful for those experiences. But I also uh, am... I'm very happy to promote a way of life that hopefully will 
get people to a healthier state of life quicker than, than what it took me. Yeah, of course. And you've been paving the way with the paleo movement and educating people around sugar and, and what healthy, what eating healthy actually looks like. How have you also navigated the naysayers and the industry bodies who don't want this kind of change? Uh, I, I guess you just do what works for you. And I think if our focus is that, then that is for you. So there is nobody out there that can control what you eat or how you live your life. You are the boss of your own decisions. So once you accept that full accountability for every single decision that you make in your life, then it really doesn't matter what a naysayer says or what these institutions say or do because they can never take away your free will. People can look at that however they like, but I would encourage everybody to take their, on their own personal responsibility and be conscious of the decisions that they make. And because I'll say it again, no matter what situation you are in, you can decide how you are going to live your life from each and every decision to the next. So where it comes into play, the, the naysayers or the industry, well, it, it doesn't really matter. I do a lot of questions and answers on my social media and people say, what do, you, what do I say to somebody? You know, obviously somebody changes their diet and they've got their friend and family or, or work colleagues giving them a hard time. Okay. What does it matter? What does it matter to them if you were reaping the benefits? Mm -hmm. You know, because generally if someone is, is attacking or making you doubt yourself, that is their issue. It's nothing to do with you. And they're seeing something in you that is causing a reaction or, or you're a stimulus for their own belief systems or their own uh, journey of their life. And they look at you and go, whoa, whoa, come back. I don't know how to deal with you in this situation. What am I going to have to do if you step up to the plate? How's our relationship going to change from you being empowered? And uh, so that's that's my take on it. I love that. I think that's such a, a beautiful philosophy and a way to approach our lives, not just in health and nutrition, but in all kinds of decisions. And I, I've experienced that for myself too, where you know, when you start making changes that support you to be your best, it does, it reflects something back to other people and that can be uncomfortable. Always come back to yourself and make your own choices. Now, you, you've obviously had a big impact on many people's lives. Starting out on your journey, did you realize that you would have had the impact that you are having now? Uh, I don't know how much impact I've had on other people's lives. Again, I'll go back to social media, for instance, and when I do my, my chats with people or typed interviews or connection with people on social media, people say, thank you for changing my life. And, and I say, well, actually, we just supplied some information or some tools, but it was actually you that picked them up and did the work on yourself. So, and I'm very cautious about when people pass on responsibility to somebody else and say, you changed my life. It's like, hey, 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 take a step back. You changed your life. If you start to pass on that responsibility or, or gratitude, it, that may be uh, not the right word or the right idea. If the information that we've shared has had an impact on people, then brilliant. But uh, it has to come back to that person or, or those people that have made the decision to to change their lives in by using the decisions that they make. But um, I always say that the information is out there and when you have your own experiences of uh, personal growth, they would say that we, always, we all contain all the answers to our problems. So, yeah, I think we need to have a greater reverence or understanding of our own potential of our intuitive knowledge because once we start to keep generating and working that muscle, does this serve me, we will – get to that point where that that muscle or that response is so strong that that's when people can turn their dreams into reality, is when they're, they're, they're really asking themselves and not other people what is best for them. So I, I think that is a, a powerful practice, and that can come down to anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be just nutrition. It can be everything, whether it's should I stay up and watch this movie or this TV show before I go to bed? Should I set my alarm a bit earlier and try to catch the sunrise? Should I go for an early morning swim or should I have a cold shower today? Should I be more present in my lovemaking? Should I be more present with 
my children? Should I be more present and open and listening to my work colleagues? Should I, uh, on, the, on the way to work today, should I listen to a podcast or should I listen to some music that's more uplifting that will put me into a different state or should I try to do some mindfulness or should I just tap out? All of this is, there's no right or wrong. It's just listening to your own inner self and navigating the path based on your own internal dialogue with your higher self. If you start to keep, well, if you're in a pattern of disharmony or discomfort in any area of your life, then you need to ask, why am I in this situation? Whether it's to do with food, uh, whether it's to do with relationships, whether it's to do with your sleeping patterns, whether it's to do with your body, whether it's to, to do with your breath, and any of those, I mean, I've just scratched the surface there, but any of those, if you feel like uh, is out of that harmony, then find out what the trigger is or what the pattern is and how long have you been in that loop or that cycle of that and find a way out of that to break out of that pattern. And it often just starts with by asking the simple question, you know, becoming aware of what what is going on in our body or even becoming aware of the thoughts that are in our mind. And it's not this big grandiose thing that needs to happen. It's just asking yourself that simple question. It's that simple, (laughs) but we make it very complicated. (laughs) We do, don't we? (laughs) You also recently did the documentary, The Magic Pill, and I was interested to find out what inspired you to make this documentary. It was a, uh, it was a, it was an honour and pleasure to be able to put that out into, into the world for people to be able to view it. Uh, And again, all that information is there. It's already free for people that, uh, uh, a uh, key to search it out. But um, I guess my impetus for uh, creating that was that out of all the documentaries that are out there on food and, or health and nutrition, uh, and none were actually, in my point, from my perspective, uh, doing it properly. You know, there, there's definitely aspects to a lot of the ones that are out there that, that um, we could take information from, but from, from as a whole, uh, I didn't believe that uh, anyone had put it together in a way that, that could lead to a better health, not only for individuals, but also for families, but also for the community and also for the planet. So that was that was my, I guess, vision or mission statement to creating that film. And I worked with a wonderful, wonderfully talented uh, filmmaker called Robert Tate, and this was his first uh, feature-length documentary. And we've had an ongoing relationship for many years. We've worked together on cooking programs before. And, I knew he was the right person for this story because uh, he actually came in as a skeptic, so that was uh, okay. that was great. And we were we were very fortunate to film with the wonderful families and individuals that um, uh, allowed us to follow the journey. And uh, the results speak for themselves. So, uh, we didn't get too sciencey. We didn't get too uh, bogged down in in so much. But hopefully, my intention was to plant the seeds on individual health, uh, how do we source our food, what is going to be sustainable for the planet, and then for people to ask themselves, well, does that make sense? And if it does, then great, and then they can go on their journey and and, um, start to incorporate those simple principles, or they can do further research, or they can dismiss it completely. Uh, But there may be a period of time in that person's life, if they do dismiss it, where they might come back to it and, and Everybody is on their own individual journey, and just like myself, there was something in me that was like, okay, I want to be around for a long time on this planet. What's going to enable me to do that? And for me to be able to do that in a body and a mind that is functioning to the best of its capacity and and ability. But everybody is on a different journey. Some people, you know, I have dear friends that say, I want to live here a short time, and I I want to be able to eat the foods that I want to eat. And if I check out early as a 60-year-old or 70-year-old, then so be it. And hmm. I respect that, that that is their decision. It's their life. They can choose to do what they choose to do. Uh, but for my personal case in this lifetime is to be here as long as possible and to, to make sure that I'm not a burden on other people for, me, for them to look after me or for the, for the system to look after me. Or for me, to, I don't want to be in pain. It doesn't really sound like a, uh, a great um, uh, way of life, uh, whether it be physical or mental uh, anguish. 
at the moment, I'm choosing to do the things that uh, uh, will give me a longevity and so that I can watch my children and watch my grandchildren if, if they if they ever appear <laughs> and, uh, and watch the world evolve and be, a part, and be a part of that evolution because, fuck, it's pretty amazing. The world is amazing and every day is amazing. Why would you not want to see what unfolds and be a part of that? So, but each to their own. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching the documentary and I found, you know, there was also other different facts that you brought to the table that I guess I hadn't heard. And I think the thing that blew me away the most was just about the sustainable living, about how how much impact we're having by choosing certain produce and, you know, meat products. I think that was a real standout for me. I was just like, wow, you know, we can all support each other and build a better community if I think, you know, we can get more of this information out there so people can just become more aware of how we do impact each other. It's not just, you know, yes, we are in control of what we put in our bodies, but that also then impacts the globe too. Yeah, for sure. And because everybody has free will to do what they choose, we have to accept that. And we have to accept that everything is exactly as it should be at this particular point in in time. Because this this is all a manifestation of the conscious energy of the universe. So you have to have trust that everything is is perfectly balanced at, at all times. So um, individual health is one thing, and I often get asked by people, should everybody adopt this way of life? And I say, well, it's a hard one to answer because you do you don't want to force anything on everybody. But I also believe that. For the, for the health of the planet, then yes, I would advise or recommend this approach and many other approaches uh, for sustainable and, and for the sake of the planet. But then, on the other hand, I also have a, have a belief that everything that we are doing at the moment, whether it's the pollution or the, the, uh, the decimation of our topsoils, I also think that the human beings and nature will find solutions to these issues. I mean, I, I have to be optimistic. You know, every day or every week I hear of a new, new something new that's been developed that is finding solutions for our modern-day problems. And I'm like, there we go. There's that trust. There's that acceptance that everything will be in balance because there are people in the world that are pushing for, for these things, and I, I congratulate them. And uh, if we can support these people and support these practices that clean up the oceans, that clean up the air, that uh, are using uh, these new technologies to recycle some waste product into something that's useful. I mean, I, I, I'm fascinated by it, and, I, and it's uh, one area that uh, I really want to focus on in, the, in some of these people. Um, we also have, a, I guess, a responsibility to the planet, if we choose to, but we also have to have faith and understand that, or optimism, that there will be solutions to our problems. There will be solutions to the planet. It's just how do we get that to happen on a, on a mainstream level? And then we have the intention of the population to, I, I guess, work together as a community and uh, as a global village and put these solutions into practice. And uh, I'm an eternal optimist. <laughs> that's where I see all this. I do like that. I, I agree with you on that point too, in the sense that there is a balance and nature does find its way to bring back that sense of order as well. And it is fascinating as well, the the different ideas that, you know, people are coming up with to address, you know, you know, things like plastic in the ocean and different things like that. It is fascinating how creative we are and and what can possibly be. Yeah. I mean, I'm drinking a, a bottle of water. I'm in a hotel at the moment and I'm drinking it out of plastic. And I'm looking at what we're talking about. You know, that's probably not the best thing. But but now I know that there's new technologies that are coming out all the time where they're, they're finding new uses for prawn shells, for instance, they can turn into biodegradable waste that will one day become uh, the re- replacement for water bottles. So I was speaking to some people the other day that are, are mushroom uh, professors and experts on my, uh, um, the mycology and how they're going to be u- they're using now mushroom uh, technology to break down plastics because the fungus in there is actually, uh, it can do this. So, again, it's like, wow, there's so much that's happening at the moment. And I think if we 
I think it could cause severe stress on somebody if they're worried about every single decision that is going to harm the planet. But I think we need to be aware of it too. But we have to have trust that there's going to be a solution too. And there are, there, there's more and more coming. So yeah. we live in a very, very unique period in history. And every every person throughout history has always said that. But, but wow, at this particular point in history, it's pretty freaking amazing. There's so much and there's so much, there's so much good. Now, I have so many more questions for you, but I know our time is coming to an end, but a few signature questions. If you weren't in your current career and you had the chance to do, you know, your career over again, what would you like to attempt? (laughs) Uh, Well, it's interesting because I wouldn't redo anything at all, but, and this is what I'd like to say to people that are listening. It's never too late to change something or to explore something, no matter how old you are. And I understand your question, but if we wanted to change something, it, it, that causes us to feel like we might have missed something. If there's something that you, <clears throat> you would like to do as a career or, or to learn it, then start now, you know, and I'll go back to the magic pill. One of my dreams was always to release a film. And I, once I had that idea... I just knew what was going to happen, and I self-funded it. I didn't know how I'd get the money, but I, I managed to do it. And it was a challenge. I knew intuitively that this was part of something that I wanted to do, that it's a creation. And, and our purpose, and I don't like to use the word purpose, but our, our innate nature for being human is to express ourselves creatively in whatever way resonates with you the most. And you know what strengths and gifts and and inspirations that you have or desires that you have to express yourself. And I would encourage everybody to cultivate that and start expressing themselves however they feel better serves themselves because there's, all we have is now, so don't look back and think would have loved to have done that. Think about what you want to do and would love to do now and start doing that. If that is something that resonates with you, if it's, and it can be anything, I'll just throw a few things out there, whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's uh, um, volunteer work, whether it's adventure, whether it's traveling, whether it's uh, sitting in silence and, and asking yourself these questions, whether it's getting out into nature and connecting, whether it's looking after other animals, whether it's whatever it is, you know, it's... Uh, I, you know, we we have this one experience, so use it wisely <laughs> to give bring you joy. Mm, beautifully said, Pete. <laughs> All right. Now I know you're a keen surfer, so I'm curious about your answer to this question. Do you would you choose sunset or sunrise? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> and each is so unique. And about. About two months ago, I, I had the, the experience of going to Fiji. I go there every year with my family. We go surfing. And, and it's, a, it's a wonderful setup. And, and what it does forces you to make the decision. To There's a boat that leaves the island that I stay in. Mm-hmm. And it's the first boat in the morning. It leaves at 6 a.m. Regardless, every single day. Mm-hmm. So you go onto this island. It's a surfing island. And, and they've got four different times of the day where the boats go out to go surfing, 6 a.m., 9.30, 12.30. And so generally I like trying to get two surfs in a day. And that's usually about six or seven hours all up. So I'm always on the first boat if I can. And the beautiful thing about going out on the first boat is it's dark when you leave. And by the time you actually get into where the wave is, they're called cloud break. And that moment in, in the day of the way to do something that you love and express yourself, that that is just, there's no words that could even describe the, the, the beauty and the, the emotion that comes out to be in that, that state, knowing that you're about to do something that you absolutely love um, with other people doing something that they absolutely love. So watching that sunrise was just, it was just a true gift. And I got to experience it with my family as well, which was uh, pretty special. But then that, that same night, I go out on the three o'clock boat and we surf until sunset. And on this one particular night, I'll never forget it, it was the best sunset that I've ever witnessed in my entire existence. And it, it lasted for about an hour, and the colours, that was the most spectacular sunset I've ever seen. And I was out there with about 20 or 30 uh, men, 
Uh, I don't think there were any women in the surf that day, that afternoon. There wasn't actually. It was a bunch of grown men, and it was so profound because there's 30 guys, and it was some of the best surf that I've ever seen as well. It was about four to five foot cloud break, perfect offshore, not a drop, drop of wind except this light offshore. But everybody was just mesmerized by this sunset, and it lasted for an hour. And it was it was witnessing something so special and in the moment that, you know, we felt just, I won't use the word blessed, but it was just, it was powerful. Mm-hmm. And we all soaked in that energy and uh, the, the smiles on the faces of these men on their way home was just so profound. And it, we were quiet. It was really profound. And uh, so I, I love both and people get something out of both and uh, ancient uh, primitive societies and uh, traditional societies all around the world revered sunrise and sunset and, and you know it, it, most religion is based off the sun uh, if you delve deep into it and the sun has we need the sun and people are scared of the sun these days and without the sun none of us would exist the None of us will be here, so we need to have an appreciation of the sun instead of fearing the sun. Mm. And the answer is in there, in there for people that are willing to to look. And um, watching the sunrise and watching the sunset, there's a reason why we can watch that uh, as a gift in that if we choose to take it. That's a beautiful note to wrap up our conversation on. Thank you so much for chatting and and sharing that lovely story with us. I feel like I was there with you on that surf break. <laughs> Everybody was, you know, in, in a way, everybody experiences that. When somebody does, everybody experiences it because we're all connected. Mm. So uh, keep creating those experiences because we are all connected and we can all share in a beauty, in that beauty. I mean, I'm getting a little bit deep here, but uh, <laughs> just it, 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 enjoy these moments. Enjoy every moment if we can and, uh, and share that. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time today, Pete. Pleasure, Monica. Thank you for having me and I uh, hope everyone likes the magic pill uh it's there on netflix if anyone chooses to watch it and uh it's also on itunes or youtube so thank you so much